the kings of the earth. If I be called of God, I command you to release your treasures to me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep praying. Shadabalakata Parisia. Very powerful revelation. Rabakato Soto Pratega de Balarabakatush. Ligata Parutisia la Balarabalabush. Manda Prakato Sata Lekato Siada Balarabakash. Rabakato Soto Pratega de Balarabakatush. Ligata Parutisia la Balarabalabush. Manda Prakato Sata Lekato Siada Balarabakash. Reketeko Sada Balarabash. Thank you for the abundance of your word. Lipa roto suta paroti shaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a few minutes. You will get up again. Just a few minutes. Very powerful revelation. I don't know how many of you were listening to what Jimmy was sharing. Amazing revelation. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our eyes and praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7. Tonight I'm sharing about God's wealth transfer agenda. Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7. Read with me. One, two, read. The rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower. Please talk to me. The rich ruleth over the poor. It didn't say the rich man. The rich anything rules over the poor anything and the borrower is servant to the lender the borrower remains a servant to the lender it's an ordinance as far as this earth is concerned that one of the ways satan makes slaves is to hijack the economy of the earth listen carefully the bible says a borrower is servant to the lender provided you are the one at the other end to receive regardless of who and what you think you are he says you remain a slave there is a conspiracy listen carefully there is a conspiracy upon the earth and that conspiracy like a Jimmy was sharing is a strategy by the kingdom of darkness remember i taught you that dominion happens through words through ideas through informations strongholds also get to men through words through ideas and information that is programmed to men that does something to them our loved ones are victims of this limitation the bible says where jimmy shared that a prophet of god notice satan did not come and say your generation must serve me he made sure something happened to them and in return the children who had potentials to be prophets we are now going to be dragged into a system of servanthood. There is a way Satan keeps the seed, the church, our families, in captivity using economy. Most people do not understand that wealth is warfare. Wealth is not about cars. It's not about houses. Is a contention for dominion. The epicenter 
the corporate headquarters of dominion on earth is economy more than politics more than whatever it is the epicenter of dominion jesus taught us that when it comes to this there are only two masters on earth god and mammon not satan god and mammon and he said you must serve one of them in your lifetime so it's not a question of whether you want to serve or not you must serve one the only option you have is to choose god or mammon there is an agenda by the gates of hell to keep the people of god in poverty in penury in captivity this is not the issue of job this is not the issue of cars and houses and jeeps and no 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 it's an agenda because for as long listen carefully for as long as the body of christ remains poor and beggarly and struggling servitude satan will leave you praying in tongues he doesn't mind satan will leave you seeing your visions visions of the church being built visions of mission agencies that will never come to pass because whoever owns the resources makes the rules whoever owns the resources makes the rules i don't have time but i want to just give us just an introduction are we together the bible says in babylon something happened look at me that once upon a time a king said build an image use money to build that image not cement not block he said that image must be built with gold and he says, everyone at the sound of the shofar, everyone, rich or poor, if you are within that territory, bow down to, not me, the stature that I have used money, bow to the system that I have built. He didn't say bow to me. He said bow to the gold. And there were certain gentlemen who said, no, we are not going to do this. He said, you will not do this? When you hear the musicians, when you hear everybody, you bow down to that stature. You must bow down. It was 90 feet solid gold. And the boys refused. They said, oh king, we love you, we respect you. But when it comes to this one, no, we will not bow to you. Our God is able to save us. But even if he does not deliver us, oh king, we will not do this. It was a fight between gold and the loyalty that comes with it many people see the rule is this bow to that stature and then earn a living that's the condition that on earth if you will ever rise you must get to the point where you are forced by life to bow to that gold stature so you can be coming to church and someone calls you and says where are you you say I, i'm leading prayer some say what nonsense prayer you better rush and come quickly and you bow to the stature you have to run to respond because your daily bread satan does not have to come and stop you he just stops the system of supply notice that everyone in the bible who demonstrated a level of influence with finances most of them either operated the covenant of God or they were satanic and diabolic. Are we together? Wealth and prosperity played a role in the resurrection, the salvation. The Bible says Jesus was on the cross. Prophecy said he would be in a virgin tomb. That was where resurrection had to happen. But every preacher, every well wisher finished their ministry at the cross. Nobody had the access to continue only a man of influence called joseph of arimathea he used his influence and went to caesar and said give me the body of this one i have a tomb already and they took his body and put in the tomb many of you did not realize that jesus had to raise up from the grave that's where that scripture now becomes complete oh grave where is thy sting oh death you know oh grave where is thy sting oh death you know where is thy victory and so on and so forth there is an indoctrination and satan has used preachers to bring this indoctrination let me tell you this you see i've said it again correcting the body of christ in itself is a ministry is an office not every preacher not every spiritual man has the anointing to correct the body the mistakes and the imbalances stem 
from people who believe that they are good observers and in a bid to balance what they call carnality and materialism, they have become prey for Satan. Most people who have preached against wealth are people who are secretly frustrated by the inability of understanding the system to make it happen. So to excuse that frustration, they carve out a theology that keeps people bound. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 Satan took Jesus to a high mountain showed him the glories of the earth right? where the scripture we shared day before yesterday and he said all of this he called it power has been given to me cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities my influence my ideas will through the instrumentality of prosperity not just prayers not just fasting my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the lord shall comfort zion there is there is an indoctrination and you know sometimes i stand and i watch people and sometimes i literally fight tears because it's amazing how many well believing christians have fallen prey to this it's a transgenerational indoctrination are we together now it, 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 it has come it has become a stronghold we have become victims of babylon we dance by her tune that she goddess that is upon a horse coordinates our, our activity they use money to tell you when to pray they use money to tell you when to marry they use money to tell you when to come out of a house. They use money to tell you what geographic location you should be. And you are helpless because the rich will always rule over the poor. Every time. Listen. The Bible gives us a mystery. That in Egypt, the people were building as slaves. Remember, God's covenant people, they were building. And then the Bible says the Egyptians provided straw. So there was limited supply. The people just needed to do the whole building. And then the moment God began to speak to them about freedom, notice, when they went to Pharaoh, Moses went to Pharaoh on their behalf and said, Thus saith the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. Pharaoh said, I know what is wrong. Economy. You are having some level of convenience. That's why you even have time to hear God. He said, stop giving them straw. You will now go and look for the straw by yourself. And the moment they looked for the straw, they, start, they started shouting to Moses, Moses, don't go again. Just leave us here. Satan uses economy to keep people away from God. Understand this. Because of poverty, there are marriages that are the will of God that has, have refused to happen. Simply because the requisite resources that can help the individuals have not been there. Because of this, there are books that should be written. There are prophecies that nations should hear. There are programs. There are men and women with strange anointings upon the soil of this nation that deserve to be, hear, be heard by the world. Do you know how much it takes? Um, hey Jimmy, do you know how much it takes to pay for a TV program per month just to host a television station? On the average, not HD, 13 million per month. Yet, there are football clubs that have six of them. They have their stadium. They have everything. Why? Because they belong to the kings of the earth. So they don't charge them tribute. All that money comes from us. We are the ones who give it. And then we become slaves. Have you noticed that the greatest attack in your life will come in the area of your finances? If you have not noticed, keep watching. Satan does not have a problem with your education. If he tries to stop you from loving God and it looks like he can't get it, he will be waiting for you. He knows one day you will have children. He knows one day school fees will come. Just because he's allowing you with your 200 naira to be able to eat every day, a day will come you will not be able to pray, not because anybody changed you. Satan will squeeze you to a point where you will have to bow notice how many young people graduate with zeal and power 
they love God, they have been refined for four or five years. Look at those people three years later. They are hardly Christians again. Are we together? People who will vow and tell you, I will never collect bribe. Three years later, they are at the heart of it. Notice how many people cannot sleep and it's money that is causing it. It's an attachment to money. I just checked and I discovered that 700,000 is missing in this house and I can't sleep again. It's a sign that I'm a slave to it. It's a sign that I serve it. I made up my mind under God that I will never serve money with my life. I made up my mind that I will serve God and money will serve me. Are we together now? If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, you will be surprised to see that in the distant future. Brothers and sisters, do you know this is why many of our parents, you talk to them about evangelism, they look at you and laugh. They say, sit down, let me tell you a story. In 1975, I was the president of one group. As you all these things you are doing, I did it. Ask them, daddy, at what point did you leave God? They will tell you about something that happened in 1989 that made him vow he would never follow God again. My seat is through prosperity shall be spread abroad. I have the privilege of talking with ministers. Do you know that one of the greatest frustrations of pastors right now is not prayer, it's finances. When I talk with pastors, you will think they are going to ask me secrets of the anointing and say, man of God, how do you do it? You sit down and say, man of God, please, please. What hour are you doing this thing? Because right now, as we are sitting, and all of a sudden, when a revival is about to break forth in the auditorium that the ministry is using, the landlord will say, I've come up with a new policy. The price has been doubled because you people make noise. And because you make noise, we are doubling the price. If you cannot do it, there is a club somewhere that wants to come and start using it. And they are willing to give us six months advance. And here comes the pastor with all his anointing together with the elders. Tongue talking. According to the vision, they saw themselves till December in that place. But money is about to cancel a vision. If I ask all of you to write your prayer request right now on behalf of you and your family, and I carry it and read it, over 80% of it will be financial issues. Do you know what it means for a child to go to the father? Or mother and say, Daddy, I'm ready to go to school for a student. And the father says, What do you want me to do? That's why many men are angry, brothers and sisters. It looks like there is an age range men get to that they don't laugh again. Because the reality of the frustration, no matter what you do, even if it's their birthday, while you are celebrating them, they are distracted. They've forgotten they are, they are even in that place. It's a strategy. Imagine now that because of my financial needs, I now cook up a revelation. You see, when you see men of God manipulating people, don't be too quick to judge. I'm not justifying it, but it's the reality. Are we together? And so a man of God is preaching and here are the children. They are school fees and he has to look for a way. So he takes advantage of the gift of God and says, Pastor Alpha, I saw five million in your account. Do something quickly. Come and give me two million. Otherwise a course is following you next week. He knows he's lying. But the reality of the poverty will not allow him to repent and say I'm just joking. He's not joking. He's waiting for that money. If that money comes he will collect it. That's why many sisters are running away from married men of God. The devil didn't say stop marrying them. The devil just said let me make a specimen with a man of God. And rubbish the integrity of the anointing in the face of finances. And when they just go to the parents and say, look, I'm a man of God, say, no, no, no. We can worship at your church. We can be kingdom financiers, but no way. It's a strategy. Listen to what I'm telling you. In the days that will come, let me tell you, the church, the family, and the individuals that are financially bankrupt will be slaves they will do you know there are certain levels of revelations you cannot have until you are prosperous just allow me to prove it to you i hope you know that out of everybody in egypt it was the king that god revealed the famine that was going to come 
The revelation of the famine came to the king not because he was born again. He was the one in the position to create help. It's in your Bible. When Pharaoh was in Egypt and Joseph was there, who had the dream in the night? Why didn't God show Joseph directly? It would have been useless. Because the economic empowerment to effect what the dream meant was not there. There is a position that if you do not rise, you can't, God cannot show you what he's doing. It's not just prayer and fasting. There is an economic position where God can now say, Son, I see the enemy bringing diseases to kill children. He shows you because the capacity to stop it is there. Pharaoh goes to sleep in the night and God bypasses Joseph. God bypasses somebody he gave a gift to and goes to the one who has the position to solve the problem and shows him the dream. And, the, and he gets up. He never said it's a lie. It's true. That dream came from God. But it came to a man that had substance. No wonder we are not seeing anything in church because it makes no difference. There's no point God showing you who is dying because you will only pray about it. Oh God, won't you help them? Whereas they are crying. Remember Apostle James taught us and said, don't see somebody hungry and tell him, I bid you God speak. Go in peace. Hmm. There are dimensions of instructions that cannot come to you. So the rewards also cannot come to you because there is no capacity. There is a tragedy that the body of Christ must be delivered from. You open your mouth to speak about wealth and prosperity and the harsh criticisms that come from pastors, that come from people. I'm not talking of all this money mongering, I'm going to gather 10 cars. This agenda is not about cars and houses. It's about kingdom advance. It's about bringing supplies. How many mission agencies do you see? They will, you see them looking hungry, looking like whatever it is. You go to the mission fields and watch the way missionaries suffer as if they are dying. Their wives and children are there. Yet a prostitute, a prostitute will sleep with an unbeliever and by the next morning she has become a millionaire. That million is the prayer point of that missionary. And then you tell me since I was young, now I am old, I have not seen the righteous forsaken. That's why when we raise these songs in church, members are angry while they listen to us. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. There is a dimension of kingdom wealth. As we are speaking now, Koinonia is connected to over 45 nations of the world. It's not just with tongues they are listening to. Brothers and sisters, there is nobody that has sold one message. We would have made hundreds of millions of naira from sales. Most ministries, it's not an insult, but most ministries use sales as a system of generating revenue. It's a sacrifice that said, God said we should do in order to communicate Christ to a generation. But it takes not just obedience, but capacity to make it happen. For years, as we are standing right now, there are security people outside. Every koinonia service, riot or no riot, there are securities, all, and all of them are paid. There are bosses after the service. We've done this for years. There's not been a single time that we say stop because there was no money. Brothers and sisters, the convenience you receive serving God, there is a role that kingdom wealth played in it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the reason why we do not need to play any gimmicks on you. And say, do this, bring this, bring that, bring this. This is the pressure that you see on preachers. They announce their birthdays months before the time to force members to start preparing because the man of God is hoping that he can cash in at that time and at least they can give him something. Imagine that I put pressure on you now and say, all of you, buy me a car. 
Imagine that I put pressure on you. Think how I destroy your salvation. Think how I destroy your passion for God. Have you seen crusades now? A man of God will preach a sound message. Call sinners that are helpless. But because of financial constraint, at the end of a sound crusade, when you should even be helping them with resources, you now say, well, uh, before I end, John chapter 5 verse 11. Five dollars and eleven cents. I want to cook. What you look at how you ruin something that is a blessing. And a sinner that should love God said, you see them, these are the thieves again. And they find their way and go back and die and go to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We well, are going to pray. I made a covenant with myself that me and poverty, I waved it goodbye, it waved me back. I have no business with it. Listen, regardless of where you are, the dynamics and other things we will teach it subsequently. We have, there are teachings. Tonight is not just, tonight is to expose you that this finance thing is warfare. Warfare. I have had encounters in my life. I've had encounters with angels. I've had encounters with demons. But the fiercest encounter in my life came with the spirit. I've said it with you. You've heard me say that I was praying and all of a sudden I had a vision. And I saw an entity looking like a sea creature. The eyes were as big as a human head. And the tail was a serpent. The tail had its own life aside from the body. And he was looking at me. Red fierce eyes. And all he said is so you think you can bring God's people into abundance. It was not so you think you are getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. When you are healed, you are healed for yourself. When you are saved, you are saved for yourself. It's only finances that can get to others. Satan prefers a healthy church working in signs and wonders than a church that is prosperous. Are we together? I was told there was a family here, sadly, not too far from us, that the house caught fire. Was it day before yesterday? And burnt everything. I can almost bet you, many Christians have gone to greet them now and say, well done, sir. God bless you. I saw in a vision that God will restore all things. And then they move and leave the person. If you see the lady in that house now getting into prostitution next week, people, believers will be the first to run their mouth and say, what is all that? There is no means to even say, please take 10 naira for the sake of the children. And it's not that you don't have the heart. Satan knows you have the heart, so he will never allow the money get to you. What is there for the body of Christ to help and support this family? And say, look, this is what we have. 10,000, 20,000. And say, look, we may not give you everything, but at least let you, don't sleep hungry. Must it be a special charity fund? That's how broke we are. What is special about it? As I'm speaking to you right now, right now, do you know how much footballers get in a week? If a church gets that, they will finish their headquarters. No more prayer. The only prayer is fasting and saying souls. Hapa! I once saw a young boy or a girl, I don't know. The mother came after Koinonia. I looked at the baby, adorable baby. But the baby was born with a medic, maybe they are even here listening to me, with a serious condition in Jimmy. And for the rest of that, the child is now eight weeks. But the child was completely paralyzed. And he had an acute state of pneumonia. That child was on his way dying. He was not just depending on prayer and miracles. And the mother came. They've done their best. But the woman was watching her child die. I said, this is not the issue of prayer. I asked them to come. I, I could not sleep. I kept seeing the child's face all over the house. And I had to send one of the protocol people. I said, bring this child. When they brought this child from Shika, six weeks old, the child was just gasping. How much does it take to take this boy to surgery and give the boy a chance to live? Must it be like Mephibosheth? We're talking about resources with vision. Resources that are weapons. You don't just use tongues. Money is a weapon. You can send it. Send it to save souls. He said, how shall, how shall they hear except they be a preacher? He said, how shall they be the preacher go except he is sent, equipped?
this thing grieves my spirit because I know what it is doing for people. It's not many of us and, and, and sadly we men of God must take responsibility. The scope of our preaching is just to make sure you have enough. Let me tell you this. Look at me. As you see me right now, there is food in my house. As you see me right now, I have a car. As you see me right now, I have some money in my account. So I will be a wicked man to act as if this is exactly what preachers do. Just because we have something small, we come and stand and run our mouths on stage and talk nonsense. I'm not thinking about what to wear. If I want to wear a cloth, I can call a tailor. If I want to preach and pray overnight, I have a generator that can run overnight. But do you have it? Do I care? A good shepherd lays down his life. This is what we are talking about. Just because you are a preacher, you have a little car, you have a little house, and all you tell people is just build your spirit. Their children are not going to school. Just build your spirit. They are becoming armed robbers. They are becoming pouts. It's a strategy. We have a lot of children in this ministry. And we have the privilege by the grace of God. It is an honor for me to be able to put a smile in the face of these children. There are people today who are graduates because money was used as a weapon. There are people today who are doing well because money was used as a weapon. There are people who have escaped death because money was used as a weapon. There are people who have had the courage to turn away from a life of a nonsense rebellious life because finance was a weapon. Have you ever been taught that money is not about luxury, it's a weapon? It's a weapon of war. And in the days to come, it will be one of the most effective weapons. Are we together? Many children who should not die, died because that weapon was not there to fight the war for them. Many individuals, very simple cases. Some of you as you are seated here, you have not paid your school fees. That's your whole prayer. While you are praying now, you are just crying. And Satan sits back because the rich will rule over the poor and the borrower will be slave to the lender. This is not about, there are, no matter how greedy you are, you can't enter 10 cars at the same time. No matter how, we are not talking about, I know that there have been exaggerations. People whose life is just filled with loss and all they want is to wear the gold and silver. But I'm bringing to you a call. This is a call as serious as your fasting. A call as serious as your spiritual life. Wake up! To wake up is not to hustle. To wake up is not to do business. To wake up is not even to get a job. To wake up is to come to the realization that there is a war. And the destiny of my children is at stake. Like the woman, the wife of a prophet. Yet they were carrying the same prophet that should carry prosperity. The children were about going to slavery. Must Satan carry all our young ladies and marry them to devils and, wi and, wi and wizards all around. Simply because of financial resources. You see how many Christian ladies right now will get up and two weeks you don't see them again. And you found out that they've married one son of the born woman somewhere. And the families will endorse them because the devil will make sure that lady now is supposed to be a prophetess. But finances deviated her assignment. Is God saying anything to you tonight? This is a war. Don't see money as some luxury. And when we say money, you are just thinking Gucci, Louis Vuitton. Look, I'm teaching you things from the kingdom. Thank God for all the blessings. But there is only so much you can do for that. We are talking of lives that will be changed. I plan to use resources as a dangerous weapon. The devil will hate me in this lifetime because of what will be done with resources. Look, the good schools in this nation, our children cannot go there. The schools that are taught values. I had the opportunity to visit um, Lena Academy. Beautiful school. I got to talk with the man. He's an unbeliever but very wise and intelligent man. The, the head teacher of the school was, was a student in school of ministry. He may be here. And I got to talk and when I found out the school fees, I said this is a beautiful school. But how many children can go there? Look what has happened to our government schools now. A teacher sags his trousers 
and goes around F9 parallel. Yet he's the one teaching accounting. Yet he's the one teaching mathematics. He's as confused as the students. They help themselves to solve the classwork. That's where your child is. This is not just an issue of wealth. It's an issue of warfare. Satan is doing something to the minds of a generation. That's why you see all these young boys now. They are not serious. You see a boy of 16 years. All his business is girls and computer games. As small as he is. Prayer zero. Everything that is of God zero. So the devil now suggests something else. Codeine. Uh, what they call that thing? Uh, Tramadol. And all those demonic things. And then there is a clique of people just like him. And he becomes part of it. It's a war. It's a serious war. My child will not get up and serve the devil. I will use everything. He says, see also that you are bound in this grace. By God's grace, we are going to we will soon set up a school. And we will set it up and have the resources to bring the price down enough. To allow meritocracy that children that are competent will attend it. Not just children of big people. I made a covenant with God that I will never raise people who are just anointed. No, I believe in influence. I'm not a fool. Don't you let anybody mislead you. There are levels of your life you can never rise. A church can buy a land but no influence and a government can just come up with a policy and collect it halfway into the building and there's nobody to speak for them. You must have the resources that give you the ability to speak at the gates. He said, let her walk, speak for her. There are times you are not allowed to speak. It's your resources that is, can speak. Are we together? The other time, God TV. God TV. One of the largest Christian channels we have on earth. The few Christian channels that are preserving the purity of godliness. They were asking for six million dollars. What is six million dollars for God's sake? That for 21 days non-stop, they are crying, you listen and there is nothing that is the gospel. For those three weeks you listen, no salvation prayer, no nothing. It's just begging, begging. I love them and I respect them. What is there for somebody to just get up? What is six million? A lady somewhere will smile at a billionaire and say, I saw a house somewhere. I want it and he says, how much? Say ten million dollars. Say all for you. And Satan mocks the church. Look how we fast for money. Is that a reason to fast? Why should you fast for money? There are people going to hell. Why in the world should you fast for money? Do you know talking about prosperity forever is a cause? Why should our churches be filled with the issue of prosperity all the time? Money, money, money. Because that's what is needed. There are more important things. I will multiply them. They will not be few. I will glorify them. They will not be small. Let me tell you, there is a campaign we are leading in this nation. It's a campaign of balance. Balance. That you can be anointed and prosperous and God-fearing and serious and a responsible father, a husband and a leader. That's the Lamb's wife. Complete. Complete. Can I confess to you? Satan is not after you. As young as we are, Satan is after our children. I have seen this thing. Satan is beginning to give up on our generation because we are following the patterns of our fathers. You know our parents loved God to the extent that money or no money, that God to death. Now with the young people with intelligence we are finding. Do you know the biggest trouble on earth now is between young people from 16 years downwards? Not the other ones. Some who are 20, their parents have died. And it has forced responsibility on them. But these are our young children. 16, you sit down and talk with them and they will surprise you to hear the kind of things they are learning. And where they are learning it from. Someone has got to arise. No education, no nothing. You see somebody that tells you he's a graduate. Tell him to write a letter. A letter. He writes a letter as if he's chatting. He can't construct an intelligent thing. And that's why all the positions of influence will be occupied by unbelievers. Then very few believers, they squeeze us somewhere where it's impossible to grow. Ask a young man to construct to you a sentence right now. You will be surprised. Nonsense. And that person is a master's holder. It's not his fault. He was mentored by people who were limited.
through prosperity shall my city my agenda it's not just about houses don't join people who don't know the purpose of money don't join money mongers who everything about their life is money 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 oh i drank water in a gold cup i ate fish with a silver spoon wonderful may god bless you enjoy it but more importantly because of me one thousand souls were saved in one month that's money with a mission because of me i decided to sponsor the children of the missionaries and i said you can go and preach the the, the one that pains me most eh, Jimmy, is these missionaries I, I think maybe one day we'll play a documentary here for many of you to see the sufferings of those who have signed out for the kingdom. You look at their children. You look at a poor woman who came to hold the hands of a man to say, I will walk with you through life. Educated, but simply because of the gospel, they have been reduced to ashes. And we are here buying cars and buying all of this and claiming that because of that, God is faithful. It's not just a man's, a man's worth does not constitute in the abundance of things. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying to sit down and celebrate mediocrity. You should be a partaker of the wisdom of God in your life. However, more importantly, wealth with a mission. Imagine that you can buy five buses and give certain ministries around. Capro, um, what they call them navigators and all these people and say this is the hand of god upon your life what is my business with your 20 estates what's my business with your 100 estates you will die and your irresponsible children will sell it that was the pain of solomon but that someone can stand today do you know billy graham preached in north korea the only preacher Koinonia, please let's wake up. This thing is an agenda of darkness. To enslave me, to enslave you, to enslave our children. That a time will come, the last time you will see your child was when he was three years old. You will see him again. Slavery took him to go and walk. Look at all these young girls that are in Italy. These young girls that are in Libya. Don't you think they have parents? Are the parents not alive? Someone just comes to tell them, I want to give you a job in Libya. And takes those young girls and go and ruin and wreck and destroy and shred their lives. They come back years later. Their contemporaries have gone far ahead of them. And they are back. No education, no God, no wisdom. If anybody marketed poverty for you, I'm cancelling it tonight. At the same time, if anybody has opened your eyes to see that all about money is just car and jeep, I still cancel it tonight. Yeah. That people, men and women, whose heart is not in their treasure, who have set their minds on things above, that no matter what God gives you, He can place a demand at it at any time. God can say, look, Pastor Alpha, these five children are your project. And you say, yes, sir. Not just because you are obedient, the means is there. Noiseless impact. Not making noise all around and talking rubbish. Imagine how many ladies here can have foundations and bring all these young girls whose lives have been destroyed and change them and build them. You can't do that if you have to depend on your daily bread somewhere. We are going to pray. Lord, make me your treasurer. Rise up. The first treasure that you had disappointed you. Lord, I can be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom. I can be trusted with the resources of heaven. Lift your voice. Please, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lift your voice. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, trust us with your resources. Lord, Pray for the Lord. 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 Pray for the Lord.
Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. The Bible says, For God gives a man that is good in his sight. What? Wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he giveth travail to gather and to heap that he may bring to him that is good before God. Lord, the wisdom that will attract resources from the world to be used for kingdom business. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Quickly, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13. Four verses. We are reading 13 to 17. Please everyone look at your screen if you can see it. I want to read it. This wisdom have I seen under the sun and it seemed great unto me. Are you ready now? Follow the story. Next verse. There was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it. We are talking of warfare here. Warfare. Now there was a... There was found in that city a what? Poor wise man. The Bible says, And he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man, no man remembered the same poor man. 16. Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Read the remaining. One to go. Nevertheless, a poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. You will never rise to a position of influence if all you have is just ideas, wisdom. It takes economic empowerment to make these proud kings of the earth listen to you. It's more than information. It's more than education. You need the resources that will force them to listen. Open your mouth and say, Lord, in addition to my wisdom, give me wealth. Give me wealth. Let me not be a Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. It says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. We are going to talk about the rest. There is something prosperity can do to you. It can make you forget God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He is giving this man an advice. When you have built houses and when you are now comfortable, let me tell you this. There are many people who have never been prosperous enough to forget thinking about money. 
But there is a realm in your life. You don't have to be a millionaire to get to that realm. There is a realm where your basic needs are met beyond measure. There is no reason why you should have concerns for food to eat. You will be surprised to see that you will not pray for one month. That the only time you open your Bible is when you come to church. You did plan to backslide. Comfort outside of God can make men happen like that. He said, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. That's the message. Every other thing was just an addition to that message. The central message in this verse was, don't forget God. He said, but for your information to remind you, it is He that giveth thee what? Power. 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 Like a herbalist gives you a charm. He says, use it. That God can give men the power, capacity, ability. God can give a church the power to get well. God can give a man the power to get well. God can give a family the power to get well. He said, you have not because you ask not. You do not have the power because you ask not. You do not have the power that programs favor upon you because you ask not. You do not have the keys and the ideas because you have not. You are there looking around for it but you are refusing to ask. It's not found on earth. Only God can give it. Lift your voice and say, Lord, the power to get now listen when it comes to the issue of prosperity there are systems Whatever you receive in the spirit, there are systems of knowledge. You make money because of understanding, not business, not job. It is your understanding that controls things. There's no time to deal with that today. But we're going to deal with two aspects, just two areas. Number one is the favored dimension of kingdom wealth. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. 21. The favored dimension of kingdom wealth and i will give these people favor in the sight of wicked men god can use anybody to favor you egyptians are not the people to ask favor from i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians what will be the proof of the favor it says and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go Emptiness is proof that there is no favor. It says when there is a relationship between favor and abundance. It says I will give these people favor. I will give these people favor. I will give Joshua Selman favor. I will give Koinonia favor before anybody. doesn't matter who. Before governments. Before kings. Before nobles. Before Gentiles. I will give you favor. Let's see the fulfillment of it. Chapter 12, verse 36. God said, I will give these people favor. When God speaks, can we trust Him? Yes, Chapter 12, verse 36. Quickly, please. Chapter 12. Read with me. One to read. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent to them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. That's favor. That's favor. That somebody who has no business blessing your family will get up and say, I have five houses. I was sleeping and I saw in a dream. And I brought the key. And the, immediately overnight. Let me tell you this. I want you to believe this. Brothers and sisters, get rich quick schemes may be wrong. But God can give men speed of prosperity. Don't ever allow anybody indoctrinate you. It is the training process that takes time. 
the manifestation will happen overnight like the twinkling of an eye it is true it takes time to be trained but when the favor lands on you you can sleep in prison one night and by the next morning brothers and sisters there is no reason to ever see the trace of poverty around your life again it says and they spoiled the Egyptians if all you will get in this life is what the labor market gives you prepare to be greedy prepare to be angry prepare to have stress there's nothing wrong with your productivity remember an anointing was put on the fish fish does not produce coin but when a grace came on that fish coin came out it's one thing to be skilled it's another thing for an anointing to be upon your skill when a car a house that's no longer profession that's favor are you hearing what i'm saying when share rental can buy bus for a mission agency then this is not rentals again there is a hand that is influencing it when your song all of a sudden gets to the nations you had the skill but the wings is no longer skill that one is grace i believe in be skillful but it's your skill anointed there are many gifted people on earth that will never see the finger of god hallelujah i was traveling to lagos from a few weeks ago and i flew with professor wale soinka in fact he was sitting down at my seat and while i was just admiring the man truly i was and i was looking at him and the air hostess was trying to get him up so that i'll sit and i rebuked her. i said don't do this this is a prestigious man this is a man who from the confines of his village has gone around the whole world nobody does unusual things naturally whether the person admits or not the truth is that it cannot happen there is a level of growth and influence and impact now and i looked at him said my god look at this there are people who go to the devil they are skilled though they are businessmen they finish the business meeting while people are sleeping they are there naked in a shrine they have you see the man and they tell you this guy came from harvard he is wise enough he knows with his wisdom he also needs prosperity so the harvard says sit down and he sits naked that's the ceo of a company of an airline and all of a sudden they concoct rubbish on his head and once they finish they kill a baby there and drain the baby's blood they all drink it the man gets up and customers start coming his wisdom created the company something else is what is calling the customers believers do not understand the favor dimension I, I have cried this thing in this ministry and tonight i know our time is gone but please in the next two three minutes everyone that asked receiveth cry and say lord put your presence on my life Hallelujah. Listen, we are praying. Favor is not just money. Favor is men. There are things money cannot do. Let me tell you how you know you are favored. By the speed with which men arise to help you. You can be rich and die alone. Build a house alone, no helper. Send the children alone, no helper. Favor is not when you have money. Favor is when you have men. In the multitude of men is a king's honor. When you have men, you have their resources. Listen, let me tell you. There are some of us, we have some money, but we don't have favor. Don't be deceived that just because there are resources, 
you have tea and bread, you can build a little house. That does not mean you have favor. Favor is when men come. David was in the cave of Adullam. Men left everywhere and came. They covenanted with themselves. That's favor. There is the favor dimension. You know when favor is working. When men begin to appear. You hear people testifying. An uncle called me. I told you no man comes to you by himself. They are called. We are getting to them. That will be the last prayer point. Father, every area in my life that have not experienced favor, send men. Send men. Send men. Send men. With their wisdom. Send men. With their Send men to Koinonia. Send men to every family. We are going to pray. Hosea chapter 12. There are three dimensions to kingdom wealth and prosperity. Please listen. The first dimension is called transactional wealth. Wealth that is as a result of selling value. Business. Your job. You exchange your skill. You exchange your productivity for a financial reward. That's the first level of wealth. It's called transactional wealth. You don't receive rewards until you sell something. Your idea, your skill. That's the first level of wealth. The second level of wealth is called transformational wealth. It is the reward you get for changing lives. It's the reward you get for transforming people. Are we together? If you bless someone, you raise someone, you lift someone, that person now blesses you. You are not selling anything. You are giving. The person is coming back with gratitude because his life has been transformed. This is the second level of wealth. The third dimension of wealth is called sovereign wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. Exclusively a product of prophecy. These three dimensions of wealth must work in your life. There are many of us only the transactional level. You have a job. You are doing a little business. Wonderful. But you are limited. Listen. Please give me this. If this is 100 naira, transactional wealth says it's 100 naira forever. I can't buy this 1,000. It will be a scam. You will be cheating me. I can, I can sue you to court. Are we together? So this is, I'm selling a product. That money remains provided my idea works. If I am sick or something happens to my system, this is gone. It's over forever. The second is that I can find out when you are thirsty and give you this. And you will remember that one day I bless you and now buy me a carton of it. Your rewarding me is based on your perception of my usefulness in your life. But there is the third dimension. Wealth by the finger of God. Verse, verse 13 please. Hosea 12 and verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Not by their desire. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel Israel out of Egypt. He said, and by a prophet they were preserved. There is a dimension of the prophetic in wealth. That's why herbalists will never go out of business. 
most heathenistic businessmen know they will pay their staff 200,000 and pay a herbalist 10 million is the perception of the value are we together second chronicles 2020 and then we'll pray the last prayer point tonight second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa and as they went forth Jehoshaphat stood listen, and said hear me O Koinonia and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem he said believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established but believe his prophets so shall you prosper. So when the woman was in challenge, there was no time to start learning any business skill. The, her children was, listen, there are things that you need God to come speedily. When will you learn business skill to play the rent? You can learn later on, but the rent needs to be paid in 24 hours. That one, you don't need transactional wealth. You don't need transformation. You need sovereign wealth. The finger of God that by this time tomorrow, the economy of a land, the reason why many African nations are poor, they have abused the voices that God has put. They are intelligent people with economic formulas. But when God speaks, most of them just look and say, oh, don't worry. But the prophet said, by this time tomorrow. And a foolish man said, even if God opens the windows of heaven, shall these things be? He said, you will see it, but you will never partake of it. Every time people were hungry in the Bible, God sent prophets. Jehoshaphat here. The widow of Zarephath. And several other people. They were looking for fish in John 21. They couldn't catch any fish suddenly. The very prophet himself, the prophet of prophets, Jesus, little children, have you any catch? He said, no. He said, cast your net to the right side. Immediately, they caught fish. They had to call on their partners to help them. I'd like you to pray because I'm going to speak certain things from the depth of my heart. Pray and say, Lord, change my life. I tap into the dimension of sovereign wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. Wealth by the finger of God. Hallelujah. In 2007, I had a vision. A real vision, not a dream. In that vision, I entered, many things happened, but I entered a room, a door was open. As soon as I entered that room, I saw dollars, I saw pounds, I saw naira, and I had gone for a meeting where Bishop Oyedeko was there. And I knelt down before him. I was sowing a seed. And he told me there is more. He said I should bring out. When I sowed it, he laid his hands on me. And I entered that room. I looked. I was holding something like a bag. How can a room just be full of money alone? And surprisingly, I was not even connected to it. Not like you want to carry quickly. And then a voice spoke and said I should pick and then I picked a few of the different currencies and I put there. I was about to step out and I had the audible voice of God. Four words, massive kingdom wealth transfer. I had that voice. I remember when I announced that thing, people insulted me. People said all kinds of things. And I said, this is not my fault. It's something that I saw. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill your prophets. That there are people who God will make a declaration and they will just sit down and not care and say it doesn't matter. All these ones are nonsense. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a prophetic dimension of wealth. You hear people receiving alerts here that they don't know the person who sent it. You can just see one name. You can just see two names. It's not a lie. It's not a scam. One of our dear ones here 
after one of such sessions like that, he just went to Kaduna and found out that Dunamis were sending all their land. And they just brought him and kept him at the helm of affairs. And God just multiplied and lifted that guy like that. People's lives are changing except your own. There are people who are not as smart as you, but they can be foolish enough to say, Lord, I believe you. I remember when I, the Lord instructed me to go to Canaan land and sow a seed into God's servant, Bishop Oyedeko. And I went there, did it. I won't tell you what, but it was a sacrifice. And when I went, I came out happily, though costly. I was on my way to leave. And the Lord told me to kneel down there at Canaan land. He said, put your hand on the ground. I put my hand there and he said, from today you have entered overflow. 